Okay, so I'm back in Adobe Captivate 12.2 here, and I have a question slide in front of me. One of the things that we really enjoyed, or at least I did anyway, with prior versions of Adobe Captivate, Adobe Captivate Classic, Adobe Captivate 2019, etc., was the ability that you could import an entire pool of questions in one shot, whether you were creating a question pool or you were importing them into your main Captivate project, either worked. And of course, the advantage of that is that you could you know, strip away all the text formatting, import it clean, and it would take on all the characteristics of your Adobe Captivate project. You also wouldn't have to go in and edit things like the number of answer options. It would automatically recognize that. But the process as it stands right now, if I'm in Adobe Captivate 12.2, I certainly can type in my stuff here. I run the risk of possibly creating a typo. I also run the risk of, you know, maybe selecting the wrong correct answer as the correct answer instead of the one of the distractors here. When I do copy, of course, I could be copying from a source document that contains its own formatting, and I might override the formatting of my Adobe Captivate project. So again, it probably only takes you about 30 seconds to copy and paste, longer if you're typing it up by hand, but you know it still does take time, and there's the risk of running into errors. Okay, so I've updated to Adobe Captivate 12.3. I just have a blank project for, for now to demonstrate this ability. One of the things that we now have, of course, in Adobe Captivate 12.3 is the ability to import our question slides from a source document, specifically a comma separated value document. It's basically a text document and it uses the commas to denote the different fields. You can open these up in Microsoft Excel or other spreadsheet software and edit them there. So let's actually do that before I do any importing. I'm just going to open up Microsoft Excel. I've already opened it before, but you'll find the sample question file in the Adobe Captivate installation folder under gallery and quiz. If I double click on this, it opens it up here. And I'm just going to resize this a little bit so it's easier for everyone to see here. So you're going to have these columns. The first column is for the type of question. And the type of questions that are available to you are multiple choice, true, false, matching, sequence, and short answer. The next column is for points, and here you would simply enter in the points. You could obviously do this after the fact, but the advantage of doing it here is, let's say I only want to assign five points for true-false questions, because they're you know not as complete as a multiple choice. The next column is, of course, for the question stem. Now, this is where you might want to just select the upper corner here and just resize everything to make it easier to read. So these are just sample questions that Adobe have provided us here. How do I create a timeline in Adobe Captivate? Add videos, audio, images, etc. from assets. Is this true or false? Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The fourth column here is for your first answer. And this case, a multiple choice. Our first answer is the correct answer, and we denote that by using an asterisk at the beginning of the answer here. Same thing with the true-false. If you enter true-false, just denote the correct answer, in this case true, with that asterisk or star, if you will. Now, here, uh, another multiple choice. The correct answer is a little bit later. It's an all of the above and uh, another true false here. Here's a matching question here. And now this uses, uh, I know you saw the, the pipe symbol up here. It's not being used the way it's being used down here. The match is simply you use the pipe symbol, which you can use by pressing your shift key and the button just above and to the right of your enter key on a Windows keyboard to generate that. It's just a straight line that goes up, uh, up and down here. 
Basically what it's saying is that the content on the left goes with the content on the right. And obviously once you import this into Captivate, it's gonna shuffle one of those columns and you know the user will have to match uh, one side to the other. Sequence here, you simply put the answers in the order that is considered correct. So this is, uh, in this example, they're saying which order do the versions of Adobe Captivate come, starting with the newest, going to the earliest. And then of course, with the, the short answer question, the user will have to type in YouTube and Vimeo videos. I would probably just do one word answers for short answer, but that's just me. Okay, before we exit the Excel spreadsheet containing our CSV file, let's scroll all the way over to the very right-hand column. Easily missed because, of course, it's usually after a whole bunch of blank answer options. But there are two different slide types in Adobe Captivate, as you probably know. The first is a knowledge check, and that's simply a practice question where learners can just test their knowledge before moving on. This is denoted by the KC designation here in slide type. And if you're creating final questions, you can mark them as G for graded. And that's going to make sure that when you import these questions into Adobe Captivate, they're set up as the right type of question from the very start. So I'm going to close this down. I'm not going to save my changes here. Now to get these into your Captivate project, it's pretty straightforward. You just simply click on the new slide icon, go down to the question slide section, and at the very bottom, you've got this option for import CSV. So we'll select that, we'll navigate to the correct spot. Right now it's pointing to my desktop here, but we will just go to our C drive. We'll go to Program Files, Adobe, Adobe Captivate, and we're looking for Gallery and Quiz. And there's our sample questions.csv. I would recommend that you copy this out of that folder before you edit it with your actual questions and place it in the same folder where your Captivate project is going to reside. But for our purposes here, this is fine. So I'm gonna open this up and you'll see almost instantaneously, it generates all the question slides that I need. I can further make changes, like for example, you know, with any of the questions, I could choose to change the points if I wish, or I could increase the number of attempts so maybe we want to give everyone three tries for this particular one. True, false, maybe only one try is good. And, you know, if I decided that the answer that I put before was not the correct answer, I certainly could edit these questions just like you normally would do in Adobe Captivate. We could change what the correct answer is. If I decided I didn't want to use an all of the above, I could actually get rid of the last option there, change this to multiple answers, and then we could select our answer rather than all of the above. They have to select all of those answers. And I recommend that you would also simply change, select all the correct answers so that the learner knows that you're looking for more than one. But as you can see, this saves you a whole lot of time if you have literally dozens of questions to import, you know, it's gonna save you a lot of typing or a lot of copying and pasting. And let that CSV file be your source document rather than some other document.